Hey guys, I've got my um, V3 pedals here and I want to do some maintenance on the um, the pedals, stop them squeaking. I haven't done this before but I'm assuming I just need to take these, uh, maybe these four screws out and then pop that off and then um, slide the components off from this way. I think there is some screws underneath here so I'm probably going to have to pull the whole pedal assembly off to get them. So I've seen a video where the guy was taking these apart and these were really tight. Uh, probably helps if you've got a long handled wrench as well. So the 5mm is actually a little bit loose. So it's probably an imperial size. 5.5mm is too big. So I actually stripped the hex head of the bolt here um, by using the incorrect wrench and there's a couple of these bolts that have a nut on the other side which is a half inch spanner and you're better off holding the hex wrench and then just moving the spanner side and undo the nut, it's a lot easier. Yeah so these two ones were fairly loose but these two are really tight so I'm going to have to go and find a, a wrench that fits better for those ones. Okay, so I've gone and found a wrench that um, is a better fit for a lever to get more leverage on this. I've got a 8mm uh, deep socket uh, on an extension bar, and so that fits over the um, wrench. So um, any piece of tube that's heavy enough would be ideal, as small a diameter as you can, just enough to fit over that. So that was actually quite tight. So that's a good idea to leave your um, pedals mounted to your rig until you loosen these off. So that is crazy tight. Actually I've just stripped the hex out of that now. So there is actually a nut on the other side here. So here you can see the grub screw that um, holds this, the pin that goes through this part of the pedal. And I'm assuming there's one on the back of there as well. So they need to come out to enable these pins to come out. So I believe this is a 2mm uh, wrench. Hopefully it's not too tight. No, it's pretty good. 2mm is actually a little bit loose in there, so it's obviously an imperial size, but this is good enough to do the trick. So these grub screws aren't actually very tight. So here I'm just using an allen wrench to push the pin out. So the brake one doesn't actually have a recess in it, the accelerator one does. Um, the brake one is just sort of screwed in against the pin, which is why when I go to remove the brake one, um, the pin is actually quite hard to get out. And this is because the grub screw has actually damaged the pin surface. So obviously this... Um the wires for the accelerator here. This section is going to have to come off to get at this pin. Once again they're the same size and they're not overly tight. So 
So there are these small plastic spaces on here. So make sure you don't lose them. So that's actually got a small cable tie on it there. And there's a bit of dog hair on that um, circuit board there. So I'm going to clean that off. So I'm just cleaning off all the excess grease here and then I'm going to remove the accelerator pin. So this pin is coming out very easily. That's the hole in the pin that I'm going to have to line up. It's actually just a locating hole, it's not a threaded hole. And so there is a couple of little recesses there on the end. You can see all the old dirty uh, grease on there. Yeah, so as you can see there's a little screw, there's a little screw in here that's holding this bracket on. So as you can see on this spacer, the shiny side goes to the inside. I made the mistake of not being more organized um, when removing these parts and um, laying them out in a specific order. I did manage to get them a bit jumbled up but um, in the end I got it all back together how it should be. So there is this uh, rumble motor too that's still attached so you could remove that if you wanted to. Uh, you've got these little brass bushes in here. So I remember when I first got the pedals I know they only lasted about two weeks or so before they started to squeak. After I did this service they lasted less than 24 hours and they started to squeak again so if I was doing this again I would probably only do the top pins because that's where they tend to squeak and um, not worry about the bottom ones because yeah it's just too much effort for, for what it's worth really. I mean you still want to lubricate them but you can probably go like two years or so before you do that. Depending on how much you use them of course if you use them for like five hours a day or something every day you might want to uh, increase that. So here I'm trying to see if I can get enough length on the rumble motor cable to uh, not have to remove it but in the end I decide to remove the motor. So I do need to pull these rumble motors off um, to get enough clearance for me to slide this pedal right off. I could try and clean it up with it still on there but I think I'll do a proper job of it. So what I'm going to do to stop getting these mixed up, although this has probably got a longer cable, I'm just going to put a mark on this one so I know it's my break. So here I make the mistake of removing the rumble motor first. Um, so yeah if I was doing it again I would remove the pin first and then remove the rumble motor because the cable runs behind the um, the plunger assembly that has the pin through it. So the brake pin was real difficult to remove. Uh, it took me about five minutes. Uh, so this video is sped up. So five minutes and I still haven't got it removed yet. So I've still sort of got the same problem anyway. This wire is sort of still restricted. Like this can't come out through that gap there. Okay, so here's the top of the accelerator. This spacer, or this 
sleeve here can only go one way so it slides in so obviously now's the time to uh, clean all your components up now that everything's uh, removed so it's probably not super important with these but try and keep uh, the matching ones for the corresponding pedals so these two uh, for my brake pedal so these two longer spaces there's one longer than the other the longer one is for up the top here shorter one down the bottom I can see how it's going to be real easy to mix these up because I've already mixed these up these are slightly different one of these has got a shiny edge so the shorter one but I'm not sure which is which now but I guess I'm going to figure it out okay so this is the pin out of the brake pedal and it doesn't have a indentation in it um, you can actually see there where the screw has marked it and that's probably why it was difficult to get out because it was catching on there so I'm not going to worry about my clutch because it barely gets used um, in fact at the moment because I'm just playing ACC um, it doesn't get used at all so it's a good idea to put something down to um, catch the grease either a bit of cardboard or an old towel or grease rag or something So now with this cable for the rumble motor for the brake, um, slot the first end over and then poke the cable so it's behind the shaft and then slide it on. So I'm just holding the sleeve and I'm rotating the pedal just to uh, lubricate all the way around on the sleeve spacer whatever you want to call it uh, some grease on the rotator and then some on this part as well Actually, I've made a mistake here. So I need this short spacer. So I'm going to put a little bit more grease there. Even though that one there doesn't really need much because it's it will only have minimal movement. I mean, it still might move a bit, but we do our cable. Slide that on. And now the fun begins with I'm pretty sure that I said the longer one was the top, so that there. So we'll put a bit more grease on. Once again, this should need minimal grease, but give it a decent coating. Grease on this one. Go a bit on here. So I think the main cause of my squeaking issues that I have is these pins up here. It's not really down here, so. I think that goes around like so.
So now I should be safe to put this piece back on. So the shorter of these screws go onto the shafts, I believe. You just need to be aware that this little square recess fits over this square section here. Try and do these shaft ones first. I won't go too tight with them. For some reason there's a gap that I can't... Oh, it's because there's that foot. So I need to remember to put this little foot on. Like so. And I'd say that's the reason these are longer to account for that extra bracket there. So I'm just going to put these roughly in place to start with. So this is the only one with the nut on it. I won't worry about that one just yet. Make sure that all my components are going to go together with this all done up. So I'm going to break plunger. Okay, so I've already come across a problem, and that is my paddle is in the wrong spot. It's rotated around too far, so now that's all the travel that it's got. So I need to pull this back off and rotate these pedals around. Control just doing it loosely, but so it's going to need to come right off. If we rotate them around, now do it up. So make sure that your locator, your square section is in that locator recess. Once again, make sure your pedals haven't moved back to where they were. So there's some continuity issues with the video here. Uh, that's just because I've got an extra plate for mounting to my rig and uh, that was causing me some issues. But basically the process is the same. Um, you want to mount your side plate back on and reassemble your pedals. Also if you want to make it easier in future, uh, the component that I've got in my hand now um, that's got the grub screw from the bottom. You can actually turn that up so the grub screw is at the top which will make it a lot easier to access and you can do that for both the throttle and the brake. I'm not sure if yours are the same but um, my clutch one actually has a grub screw at the top. So when you're doing this rumble motor uh, the cable has to go behind this plunger. Just be aware of that. Okay, the other way you can do it is drop that right down, as you can see there, hold the cable up, place this back down, insert it into this piece, and then push it out into where it needs to go. So now that I've got all that worked out, put some grease on here. You need to sort of insert that into the pedal first and then drop it down until you can get it into the other section. So it's actually really tight on that cable there, so just be aware of that. So now I need this brake pin and try and grease this up first. It would have been nice if they put like a little mark on the outside so you could see where the hole was. Because this one that doesn't have the recess, um, if I can I want to try and get it in the same spot so it doesn't damage this pin any further by going into another, making another mark. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I mean, it's going to be tricky enough on its own. I can only sort of guess where the screw hole is doing it from this angle. 
So what I'm doing now, trying to get this hole lined up, I'm actually putting pressure back on the plunger to get the hole lined up and now it's gone into place for the first part and yeah, sweet. So it's gone back in. So this piece here uh, should really only need a bit of uh, grease on the inside here. Pack that down into there. And these spaces, pretty sure they're the same. So one of these goes on here in the spring. And then your other one. Grease on the inside of here. There's not actually enough clearance there. Uh, uh, I believe you can take these two screws out here, pull this off, so that's probably what I'm going to have to do. Um, uh, if we go down below the pedal, below that shaft here, now I can actually push it in, raise it up. So that's how to get around that. So the accelerator pin has a uh, magnet on one end, which you'll be able to clearly see, and that goes to the right hand side of the pedals. And then your sensor, which is the mini circuit board with the um, three screws and the wire that screws onto the right hand side of your accelerator. Sort of looks pretty close that if that line is vertical when the pedals are sitting flat on the floor, that that will line up with the screw. So again, I need to compress that in to get the hole to line up. So I'm going to need to take this grub screw right out so I can see in the hole. Because of the shape of the recess, it's tapered to a cone sort of shape. So the grub screw would be designed to locate it. This grub screw, actually they're both sort of the same. Accelerator grub screw is slightly longer. So I'm using this small um, Allen wrench here. It's a 1.5mm. And I'm just getting on the edge of this pin here and rotating it. Because I can see, I can now see where the hole is. So I sort of think that um, the recess on the one end of the pin, because I noticed the pin was magnetic, because it's a magnetic accelerator pedal, this is what registers the travel of the pedal. If you're having trouble locating these spaces, you can apply a bit of grease to them to stick them in place. And so after all that, I think I've put this pin in the wrong hole. You'll notice that's getting more travel there. So you can see now the throw of the pedal is limited. Now it's not actually hitting here like it was before. And it um, might be a good idea once you do the grub screw up just to push on that pin and just make sure that it's done up tight enough. So these uh, screws here, the nuts on the other side are half inch, spanner, better way to do it rather than turning the allen wrench would be to just hold it with the allen wrench and just turn the spanner. So 
So I think that's everything sorted. Um, I'm not going to do these up as tight as they were originally. I don't really see why they need to be so tight. I need to plug my cable back in. And I've got my earth cable here for my grounding. That bracket's sitting, it's not sitting flush there. Um, it looks like the spaces are in place, so that must be just normal. But yeah, that's it guys. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. Please like or subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to see more content like this. Thanks guys.